Hey guys, Matt Jones here in Auburn outside the Peacock Gallery with an artwork I produced earlier this year called I Require Assistance. It's drawing inspiration from the maritime signal flag, a red uh, diagonal cross over a white background. And today is 14th of September, it's Are You OK Day? And part of the, of the aspect of Are You OK is actually someone putting forward the, the message, I require assistance. Uh, that's the inspiration to a book I'm writing shortly called Live Your Purpose on Coming Back from Loss. This theme of on coming back from loss is something we can all identify to. It's a universal theme, as is the inspiration of the, of the, of the book itself. Mental health and transition, particularly among the veteran community. Uh, I'd love to invite you to be part of this journey, uh, looking at these themes of mental health, loss, and, uh, and getting back into the game. Click, the, click below and subscribe. I'd love to see you on board. Speak to you soon. Hey guys, Matt Jones, taking out on a little sea voyage to tell you a short story about my life after I left the Army. A range of duties, a former Australian Army officer, uh, also a paratrooper, uh, deployed to East Timor and also later involved in high level planning of a lot of operations that are being conducted today. And uh, after I left, uh, using a metaphor of being here on the water, I was a little bit at sea and uh, I found it difficult at times, in fact for quite a, quite a while. But uh, over time I, I found a way to uh, come back from loss, to overcome injury and get back into the game. Well it's a dark night out there, at sea you're never really sure what you're going to get. But listen, like last year I ran the Marine Corps Marathon in Washington DC and it was, a, it was a great experience leading up to it. I did the Marine Corps Marathon because I was involved in an event that many of you might have been involved in too called the 22 Push-Up Challenge. And as a result of running the marathon, preparing for it, I had many insights about myself and lesson learned, which I wanted to share with other people. And so that was the genesis of this book, Live Your Purpose, I'm Coming Back From the Loss. Uh, I'm ready to publish now, and I'm about to enter into a crowdfunding campaign I'd love you to be part of. We're, we're launching on the 27th of September, and if you subscribe below, I'll keep you posted of some early bird offers that I think you'll be interested in hearing more about. The book is, really focused on the veteran community, broadening the conversation about mental health and transition, uh, particularly for veterans, but it's a universal theme, this issue of mental health, overcoming uh, loss and getting back into the game. It's, a, it's an issue that we can all relate to, uh, if not for ourselves, for people we care about. So welcome and thanks for being part of this journey as we invite others and ourselves to live your purpose on coming back from loss. It's an important conversation in a conversation that will help many and benefit their lives, maybe even yourself. Please click below, subscribe. I'll have more information for you soon. And of course, if you've got any questions, I'm only too happy to answer them. Thanks for your support. See you on the journey. I hope I can share more with you than just this journey on the harbour, but also some uh, great lessons learned, insights, a little bit of a story about myself too, through the book, Live Your Purpose on Coming Back From Loss. Click below. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, Matt Jones in Melbourne, uh, outside this uh, beautiful old uh, building. Uh, very characteristic of a lot of the architecture in Melbourne, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, it's an area I grew up in, and this building, I suspect, was the private hospital where uh, Major General uh, Pompey Elliott died in 1931. Uh, he died of suicide. Mm -hmm. Um, tragically at the age of 52 um, <clears throat> and uh, it's interesting reading his obituary which you can get online uh, written in in 1931 it says uh, that he he died of hemorrhaging as a result of a complication with um, being in in uh, in medical care um, but actually he was admitted to the Alfred Hospital in I think at the, toward the end of 1930 because he tried to gas himself at home uh, so it's a pretty gruesome end and then um, after he was released I believe he took his his uh, shaving razor and cut his arm and was brought into a private hospital this is the probably the only building I can think of that description in this area and um, and uh, was uh, sadly sadly died uh, to a state funeral um, just uh, over here, you can see the the, uh, the idiosyncratic uh, towers of 
Malvern Town Hall, uh, beautiful building. And um, you know, it's a long way from uh, the Boer War or uh, Gallipoli and campaigns through France and Belgium where uh, Elliot was, where he really distinguished himself as a, as a keen Australian commander with a real care for uh, success in operations. Uh, importantly, with an absolute uh, interest in preserving the welfare and the lives of his soldiers, both at war and then later at peacetime, uh, after he became a senator in the federal parliament, uh, he spent a lot of his time and energy and his efforts to uh, seek the interests of the welfare of of, um, of uh, veterans. And uh, the reason I mention him is, uh, you know, too often I think we see ourselves uh, with confronted with new situations. So here I'm talking about this current uh, era of interest in veterans and uh, how people are looking at things like PTSD and 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 uh, and uh, transition from um, from a service, particularly after operations, as though it's a new thing. But back in 1918 uh, and the years that followed, that was very much uh, an issue that was uh, poorly addressed uh, in general by Australian society. And I think um, you know, if you've studied history of the First World War, some of the things you would have looked at would have been the the social impact of the conscription campaign um, in much greater detail than the impact of veterans upon the, after their return to Australia. You may have looked at uh, how some of them were given some land packages for farming, on, often on land that was unsuitable for farming, but the actual human dimension of that story goes untold. So we haven't been telling the truth, we haven't been truth telling when it comes to how we've dealt with veterans uh, from earlier conflicts and right up to today. And so I think we do, do, do ourselves an injustice when we try and look at this narrative about veterans as a new thing uh, in, in this, um, this, this era going forward. And it's great to see in the budget, the recent budget, uh, $350 million uh, being put aside to address issues of uh, veterans' health, um, broadly speaking. Um, and I think that Dan Tian, the Minister of Veterans Affairs, is definitely going down the right track in that regard. But, um, you know, I'm concerned that there's this disconnect between policy and the experience of individual members, individual people. And, uh, you know, here I'm, this is a street across the road from from uh, the building where Elliot probably suicided. Some beautiful old uh, buildings, um, lovely old back of a bluestone church there. <clears throat> you know, and and uh, I think this street sort of captures the that that somewhat um, binary um, understanding of. The plight of the veteran. Uh, we've got a beautiful street here um, where a lot of uh, wealth has been maintained. Um, meanwhile, after the First World War, a lot of veterans struggled. Uh, this this street is typical of a certain part of of Australian society, particularly here in Melbourne. But it it fails to capture the story of veterans, as we saw across the road location where Elliot died. This is a long, long-winded way of saying that I'm about to uh, announce a gathering I'm inviting you to called Dispatches, which will examine uh, needs of veterans um, from issues of policy and uh, transition. And I'd like to have your input. Uh, many people have stories to share. And they don't have to be people who have put on the uniform or have deployed. There's people who are uh, related to people who have served, people who are friends, or people who maybe know nothing about the life 
and uh, experience of soldiers or veterans, but maybe have some useful experience that they can bring to bear. Uh, this gathering will be called, will be subtitled Dispatches, meaning uh, the act of sending people away. Um, and it, uh, it, it pulls on the, the, the uh, decoration of mentioning dispatches, which is a, a very old um, decoration that is still used today for reflecting uh, service uh, of a high standard. And the, I think the title of it will be the Pompey Elliott Veterans Forum, which they can take to address the realities of how we've, uh, how we address and have failed to address the needs of veterans, particularly in, a year, in this centenary of Anzac, looking back on a very successful officer who was treated very badly by his peers um, and also uh, other people upon returning to the point where he was um, so affected by things that occurred during the First World War, such as Fromel, and um, just the general uh, experience that he decided to uh, end his life. Uh, that is the outcome we want to avoid at all costs for all veterans and will be one of the key focuses of this forum that will focus on policy and transition. So I'm inviting you to contribute to the Pompey Elliott Veterans Forum. Love to hear your thoughts, uh, love to help you have, have your help to organise it. Welcome aboard, um, drop me a line, I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for listening.